The grind is all about a wrestler and what they go through on a daily basis to compete like a guy in Daniel Cormier. Daniel Cormier is very special. He's one of those unusual characters who grows when he steps into a fighting arena. Roy Jones Jr. used to do it as a boxer. John Jones does it. It's impossible to measure the type of mental strength and determination that's required to be an elite wrestler. He has been an elite competitor for well over a decade. For San Jose resident Daniel Cormier, his UFC journey began just down the road from his house. But for this former Olympian and collegiate All-American, sky-high expectations are nothing new. I was on the Olympic wrestling team in 2004 and 2008. I was top five in the world four times. I got a bronze medal at the World Championships in 2007. I knew how to compete, but I didn't know how to fight. Obviously, I didn't know how to punch, didn't know how to kick, had no idea what jiu-jitsu was. And, and um, I've learned it all. I've learned it all in this gym. You know, I owe everything I do in that cage and my fights to, you know, people at the American Kickboxing Academy. The reason I chose to train at AKA was because of the like-mindedness of all of the guys. I love that Kane trained so hard as a heavyweight. These guys look like they know what it takes to be the best. My very first fight, the guy was a wrestler and he was getting tired, so he shot on me. He lands an overhand right and it's Frazier going for the first takedown. Now Cormier, top position on Frazier. I somehow got my hooks in on him from behind and just started punching him on the side of the head. And Frazier right now looks like the proverbial fish out of water. The referee stops the fight. The referee pulled me off of him and I just started celebrating. Up. Your hand is about to be up in your professional MMA debut. It was the most amazing feeling in the world. Was that excited or what? My second fight, I don't even remember hitting the guy. We got into like a situation where we were just swinging punches and I remember just kind of doing this deal and I swung and all of a sudden when I tried to throw a follow-up punch, he was gone. Boom, I didn't feel nothing, I didn't hear nothing, it just, he just was gone. At one point in 2010, I fought three times in a month. And now he's dropping the lefts and the rights, Daniel Cormier. I got through it and it really did help me in terms of my improvement and everything else. Bring it on, there, come on. I realized that I was starting to get to the elite level when I beat Jeff Munson. Daniel Cormier, very relaxed, left hook, right hand. Oh, nice, beautiful oh, shot. He had fought 60 times, and I had like seven fights. Oh, another left hook, and that staggers Monson. Oh, straight right hand again. What a performance by Daniel Cormier. Two years into Daniel Cormier's MMA career, his management approached him about entering the Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix, and he had a different reaction entirely. They started talking about this tournament. Fedor, Bigfoot, Overeem, Verdun, Josh Barnett. I just had my fingers crossed. I was like, please don't try to put me in this tournament. They were like, well, you're going to be an alternate. And I was like, I don't even know if I want to be an alternate. I mean, big old hulking guys. I mean, I'm, I'm 5'10", you know? And uh, they called me five weeks notice to fight Bigfoot Silver in Cincinnati. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Please welcome to the cage the U.S. Olympian, Daniel Cormier. When I fought Bigfoot Silver, bro, I hadn't even been fighting two years. It was short of my two-year anniversary in MMA when I was standing across the cage against Bigfoot, who had just beat Fedor. What have I gotten myself into this time? Look how big Silva's <laughs> hands are compared to Cormier's, my goodness. I was nervous, and then when we started fighting, I was like, man, this is, this is I mean, I belong at this level. Wow! Darby just tagged Silva with the right hand! This kid is dangerous for everybody. The jab from Cormier! Oh, oh, God. God. It does right now. He is now the Strike Force Heavyweight World Grand Prix Tournament Champion, Daniel Cormier.
After I won that tournament, man, it just seemed like everything kind of just changed. Daniel Cormier comes into the UFC and uh, everyone wants to know uh, right away how it's going to play out, who he's going to face. Frank Mir he says he's never been in better shape, but he says he's never been more focused for another run at the title than he is right now. Good. He didn't do hardly anything. He kicked me twice in the whole fight. Good punches by Daniel. Good combination by Cormier. So explosive, and the pace and pressure he keeps right here is what has made him successful. Daniel Cormier pretty much has his way with uh, Frank Mir. Al boxes him, really just beat him in every area. And he did the same thing with Roy Nelson. Roy Nelson barely touched me. Swing and a miss. <laughs> and he can do that basically to anybody who wants. Nice knee to the body. And the big right hand. Oh, left hand. And a nice combination. Nice right. front kick. Daniel Cormier had taken himself to basically number two status in the heavyweight division. The guy that was number one, his teammate, his friend, Cain Velasquez. Those two simply were not going to fight. So Daniel Cormier dropped down to the light heavyweight division, where now he has an opportunity to be a UFC champion. 205 is my weight division. I'm going to finish my career in this weight. It's where I belong. It's where I probably should have been fighting the whole time. The best pound for pound fight in the world is at 205 pounds. If you're a competitor and you want to compete against the best people in the world, you seek him out. I only had to go down 30 pounds. This first matchup is going to be with former champ Rashad Evans. Really close to the fight, about 10 days out, Rashad had to pull out. DC thinks that's it, I'm not going to get a fight. And I remember getting the call from Dana, goes, you wanted a fight, I got you one. I hear about this kid, Dr. Cummins. Is there truth to you making him cry? Yeah, absolutely. Things got very personal. I think we saw an emotionally charged Daniel Cormier. Cormier again with the uppercut, looking to finish the fight. Cummins is in all sorts of trouble. Daniel Cormier finishes Patrick Cummins just like that. Three months later, I fought Dan Henderson, who's one of the greatest fighters of all time. I stood across the cage from one of my idols, man, and I stared him right down, and I went and kind of mowed right through him. That's it. It is all That's over. It. Daniel Cormier, winner by submission. I needed to make a statement against a guy with a name, and I felt like I did that. John Jones. You can't run away from me forever. I'm the kid at the wrestling tournament that is always in your bracket. John Jones is the guy I need to compete against. They called me one morning, Lorenzo, DC, do you want to be the champion? I go, I damn sure want to try it. And he goes, okay, you got the fight. Not many guys go through their careers undefeated. Like nobody. That's my goal. I don't want to lose ever. It's time for the UFC to have a new champion. I'm that guy.